Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. My name is Omid Mohadesi and in this presentation I will introduce the AMATS, a playful approach for capturing decision making for informing behavioral model. This study was part of an NSF grant that was performed at Northeastern University with the help of my co-authors Hifan Sanan, Rana Zandi, Rajin Drudi, Sam Snodgrass, Hazel Mergen, Jacqueline Griffin, David Kelly, Stacey Marcella, and Casper Hoffman. We would like to thank CHI 2020 organizers for giving us an honorable mention award and for the opportunity to present our work despite not holding CHI 2020 conference because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this study, we are interested in understanding human decision-making process. This is of course of interest in many different fields and many different methods are used to get such understanding. Simulation is one of the tools that are widely used to analyze and model human decision-making. Among different simulation techniques, agent-based modeling is practical when we are dealing with human systems and try to model human behavior and social interactions. But since we usually do not have access to internal mechanisms that derive human decisions, these ABMs usually use a high level of abstractions or lack behavioral aspects such as trust or mental models. This is why we need to put the human in the loop to be able to inform agent-based models. Of course, putting human in the loop of the simulation is not a new technique and is actually related to a body of research called participatory approaches for simulation. Most of the studies in this area focus on either creating a simple interface to involve human decision maker with part of the simulation or creating a serious game for the whole simulation process. The first approach do not necessarily create an authentic and immersive uh, decision-making environment and creating a simulation for the whole creating a serious game for the whole simulation may require a lot of resources. We propose the use of game ads, which are short and relatively simple games that immerse human players in a decision-making scenario. The term game ads is a contraction of games with vignettes and similar to a vignette, a game ad aims to provide a brief description of a situation as well as to portray someone. In our previous study, we designed an integrated simulation framework, which was motivated by the role of human behavior in disruptions within the pharmaceutical supply chains that leads to drug shortages. This framework consists of a flow simulator that simulates the dynamics of the supply chain and a game ads environment that immerses human decision makers into a specific role and a particular state of the supply chain. The flow simulator uh, is a multi-agent simulation environment designed based on partially observable Markov decision processes, or POMDPs. According to the POMDP framework, the agent has access to some observation that gives incomplete information about the state of the system. Then the agent can take some actions and receive some rewards. Design of the, the design of the game maps follows the same idea of the POMDP framework by allowing players to collect information, take actions, and receive rewards. In this study, we considered the drug delivery supply chain as a decision context. So we basically modeled an inventory management task where in information maps to inventory, demand, backlog, and shipments data, action maps to choosing an order amount, and rewards, your negative rewards, maps to inventory and backlog tasks. We created game maps using the Study Crafter, which is a playful platform where users can create, play, and share gamified projects on for behavioral and social science research. Using a study crafter, we designed each game map consisting of four phases. The first phase is the briefing where the players are being informed about their goal and the task within the game. The second phase is the gameplay phase where the actual decision making happens and the players can interact with the laptop computer to observe information and make decisions. After that, the debriefing phase starts where a non-player character describes the nature of the and the purpose of the study and uh, provide some feedback on players' performance. And lastly, there's a survey where you can ask questions regarding the, con uh, the knowledge of the players about the context or asking some demographics. Now, the main question is that if this is a valid methodology for capturing human decision-making, and if the game app can provide rich behavioral data to inform agent-based models. To answer this question, we conducted a human subject experiment using the beer distribution game. The beer game is suitable for studying behavioral factors in supply chains because it's simple enough to be learned quickly 
and at the same time it can retain key features of the real supply chain. We just changed the context to drug delivery supply chain to stay in line with our previous study. Moving forward, we had three hypotheses. The first hypothesis is related to a phenomenon called the bullwhip effect, which is defined as the amplification of order amounts when moving up in the supply chain. Previous studies on supply chains has shown that this behavior happens because of the misunderstanding about the inventory and demand information. And because this pattern has been frequently observed in supply chain experiments, and especially uh, with the beer game studies, Different researchers try to validate their experimental results by showing the evidence of the bullwhip effect. We also did the same by forming our first hypothesis by looking for the evidence of bullwhip effect to test the validity of using game ads and supply chain decision making. Previous studies also showed that this bullwhip effect is caused by judgmental biases that not only ordinary people but also professionals and experts suffer from. As a result, if the bullwhip effect exists, we expect to see similar behavior regardless if players interact with uh, rational and optimal or irrational agents as long as uh, the participants are not being informed about different agent types. And finally, previous studies also uh, used anchoring and adjustment heuristics to model human decision making under uncertainty and show that people often make decisions by starting from an initial value and then adjusting that to make a final decision. If this final decision is suggested to the decision maker, their adjustment is expected to be biased towards that suggested anchor. So we expect to see this anchoring in player's behavior when we provide them with optimal order suggestions according to an optimal ordering policy. In fact, we want to see if the game ads as a methodology can capture these biases in the behavior of the players. For our experiment, we considered three conditions where we created a game mat for the wholesaler role and considered human players to be playing only this role. We, we did this because with the wholesaler, we can directly observe the contribution to the bullwhip effect and test the first hypothesis. For testing the second hypothesis, we considered a variation by considering two different types of agents, a human-like agent that try to mimic human behavior and an order up to level agents that tries to order optimal amounts according to a basis stock policy. And finally, for the third hypothesis, we considered different variations where we either provide or do not provide optimal order suggestions to players. And this is how it looks like. The left image shows the ordering scene in game ads where players don't get any order suggestions, where in the right image, uh, which pertains to condition three, players were receiving suggestions from uh, in form of optimal order amount based on uh, order up to level policy. The demand distribution was the same in all three conditions and followed the beer game setting. We just made a minor change to adapt it to our drug delivery context. We used constant demand of 40 units up to week four and constant demand of 80 units after that. We had 68 participants, each were randomly assigned to one of the conditions. Among them, there were 37 males, 10 females, and 21 participants who didn't uh, reveal their gender. The average age of the participants was uh, 23 years old with a standard deviation of two and a half years. We first look at the evidence of the bulb effect in condition one. And as you can see, the bulb effect is visible with an increase in order quantities moving up in the supply chain from the health center to the manufacturer. But since the players only played the wholesaler and the rest of the agents were uh, computer agents, we also calculated the bulb effect index which is the ratio of order fluctuations over demand fluctuations at each node or for each agent, basically. We can observe that human-like agents uh, contributed, to the, contributed to the ball with effect by showing fluctuations. Human players, however, show even more fluctuations and contributed to the ball with effect more than human-like agents. Next, we compared the uh, ordering behavior of human players in all conditions we can see that the human behavior is not affected by the behavior of agents. In fact, presence of a different type of agents didn't have much impact on the ordering behavior of players. We also performed a one-way ANOVA for each time step and found that there is not a significant difference between the means of order amounts of players in different conditions, which supports the second hypothesis. 
finally, by looking again at the same graph, we can see that uh, providing order suggestions to players in condition three does not seem to have much impact on their ordering behavior, which contradicts our third, third hypothesis. However, interesting finding is the deviation from suggested order amounts. Here, the error bars show how much on average each uh, player, uh, how much on average players deviated uh, from the order suggestions. And as you can see, players tend to over order at almost all time periods. And more specifically around week six when they discovered the change in the demand and faced a stock out. This is in line with the results of the bulletproof effect stating that human decision makers start to over order when they experience a stock out. Now the question is why do we need game ads? Because there are many simulation games out there that use agent-based participatory framework to put the human in the loop of the simulation. Previous studies showed that when human participants have access to all aspects of the simulation, this can make the process unnecessarily complicated. And this shows a trade-off between accuracy of the simulation and player immersion, and suggests to avoid details that have less impact on the decision. Although we can fine-tune uh, this trade-off between accuracy and player immersion through iteration, game maps actually manage these complexities methodologically by portraying only a short and specific scenario for a specific role. In this way, we can make accurate models and immerse uh, players into specific scenarios without overwhelming them with excessive information about all aspects of the simulation. Finally, we designed game maps from the viewpoint of serious games and crowdsourcing in order to benefit from the affordances of player immersion, access to rich behavioral data, and engaging a broader audience. Previous studies also suggest that use of serious games in agent-based simulation helps in building more intuitive and interactive simulation environments. We validated the use of game ads by showing the evidence of the bullet effect in our experiment. We also observed that participants amplify their orders even more than human-like agents in our simulation. This shows that game ads have the capability to provide rich behavioral data to inform simulation agents. In this study, we didn't look at, look at how to inform simulation agents in practice using the collected data, but we looked at this in our CAR 2020 late-breaking work paper, which is accessible in the ACM Digital Library. In this late-breaking work, paper, we show how to practically use the collected data from the game ads to imitate human behavior and inform agent-based models. You can also find this paper by following this link. Now, if you are interested in using game ads and applying it to your research, you can do this by finding first finding a mapping between a simu your simulation environment and a game ad design. In our case, we use the PomDP framework to map the game ad to the simulation. Next, you need to slice your simulation into a short and specific decision context that consists of the elements of your mapping, for example, the information, actions, and reply. For creating game ads, uh, you can use the study crafter, uh, the same as with it, uh, or any other tools that you are comfortable with. Uh, you can also check out studycrafter.com slash game ads for updates about the game ads and learning about our future study. Thank you for watching this presentation. I would like to thank all my co-authors and the CAI 2020 organizers once again for the opportunity to present this work and for giving this study an honorable mention award.